Hey, we're back once again. It's the Alkalize to Realize talk show. It's Fabian the Upgrade Man presenting another fantastic show. Today we have Maria Mazaran and she is the raw, raw, raw fruit queen. Yeah, and she's a detox <laughs> specialist. So I'm really looking forward to speaking with Mariah today to see exactly, you know, what it is that she does and what she actually brings to the table in terms of health. So welcome to the show. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. So you, I knew, you, you sent some stuff to me actually yesterday when I was asking you about your journey. Um, I'd like to, to start with that really about your, your actual journey from where you, you started off. Obviously a lot of people, they come into the health movement through awareness because things have happened in their life that make them more aware of their, their actual their body and the internal workings of it. So what, what was it that got you onto this journey? Um, I would say the, the very beginning was when I started gardening in the city. And uh, that was the only place on the block which had a garden. And uh, I, we basically ripped up the whole backyard, which was a lawn, and turned it into a garden. And once I started collecting seeds and eating uh, my own fresh food, this is when uh, I started to wake up, I guess you could say. <laughs> started to wake up and realize the city wasn't the place for me. It's time to get out into uh, the country and then it all just uh, unraveled from there. <laughs> okay, so what actually unraveled? What happened? Um, well, we moved to a farm. It was a seven acre, farm and we wanted to provide all our own food because we were aware of how uh, compromised the food system was at that time we didn't realize though that meat and dairy and eggs and many of those foods that were taught are healthy were in fact health degenerating foods so um here i am on the seven acre farm collecting eggs uh, we're producing our own meats, um, going through um, the whole scenario, um, and basically everything on our plate would be from that farm, yet I was suffering more than ever. Um, we had our own raw milk even, making cheese, yogurt, but I was suffering terribly health-wise, and I couldn't figure out why. Why was I suffering when all our food was grass fed and it was organic and uh, it was basically uh, the best food that you could find. Um, it wasn't until I went to a seed exchange in this little town Penticton and this lady, she took a look at me, took a look at the family and said, you're sick. Um, you guys are all dealing with health issues, Candida. She suggested a book, it was by Dr. Young it was called the PH Miracle Source Book, I believe. I think that's what it was called. Anyways, so after reading that, we realized that what we were doing, I mean, it never felt right. Farming never felt right. It, it, it felt awful, in fact. It was such hardship, you know, getting um, animal products to your plate. I mean, what you have to go through in terms of uh, preservation and harming animals and it just never felt right so when this book suggested that all meat dairy um, was acidic acid forming foods um, right then you know a light bulb went on I, I had no idea so I cut it all out overnight and left the farm went off grid and just uh, um, discovered you know many other discoveries after that but that was the main uh, that was the main catalyst towards this journey. So uh, found, good found good homes for all the animals and uh, just left the farm and moved to a little orchard in a tiny home and began uh, managing the land for the people there, stewarding the land and just growing food and detoxing, basically. Yeah, yeah, amazing. So it's, isn't it such a powerful thing? As soon as you start to realize about uh, alkalinity um, and your pH, like I say, through that book, it, it, everything just changes, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, yeah. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long ago was that? Um, that would have been almost four and a half years ago now. Brilliant. So, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm just past year five into this journey of uh, no animal products and um, raw foods. And, um, you know, it, I started out with Arnold Eretz information after that. So I did a, a lengthy transition diet of two years. So that was a diet which was mucusless. So it's, it's plant-based, but it includes a lot of uh, steamed vegetables, raw salads, raw food, fruits, and some cooked foods, fruits, sorry. And uh, so that went on for about two years. And after that, one day I just decided, you know what, it's time to go raw. It's time to just up the fruit intake. And from there I spent about a year and a half, um, going on two years now, of just a high fruit diet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a bit, bit like myself, really. Yeah, and then, so it kind of leads you that way. So initially, once you start going down that path, you, you, right. when you get to the raw fruit, you realize that you were always going to go there anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, if, if you have the time, if you're not dealing with a debilitating health issue, such as cancer, um, I'm a big advocate of taking it slow and slowly transitioning over to the fruits but of course some people they don't have time to do that and and they just need to you know dive right in and, and take care of their health issues immediately yeah if people are suffering yeah. Do, do, yeah. You, do you come across that then and you know the works that you're doing now are you you know sort of hands-on and dealing with people who are sick etc or mm -hmm. is that what you're doing yeah. oh i am um, i work with individuals online and uh, generally we start with, I like to start with an iridology reading. So that's yeah. uh, the science of reading the iris. Yeah, 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 I saw yeah. That, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and once, uh, I, I don't get any information from them at the beginning because I want them to see how accurate and amazing iridology is. Yeah. So I'll just uh, get their name and a photo of their eyes. I'll do the reading, uh, generally it takes a few days and uh, I'll provide the reading, they can go through that, and then I'll do a, I'll, I'll talk to them and do a wellness plan up for them, which includes the herbal and the dietary protocol, and uh, to get them started, because, I mean, the, the path to wellness is relatively the same, but everybody's starting from different points. So if somebody's just getting off of animal products, I'm not going to recommend a straight up fruit diet um, immediately unless, of course, they're dealing with, you know, some cancer or debilitating illness. Um, that's where the transition diet comes in for six months to a year. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's, that's how. I'm, and I'm always there answering questions on Messenger and, and online. And, you know, I, I, I'm just there. I feel like it's my sort of my moral duty um, to provide as much information and to help people out whenever I can. I try not to stretch myself too thin, but I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. It sounds a bit, yeah. a little bit like what we're doing here with uh, Alkalize to Realize. We also look to use that, that, that scan, the thing with the, with the eye, because it, mm -hmm. it tells everything, doesn't it? It does, it's amazing. I mean, the more I learn, I mean, you never stop learning, but the, the more I learn is just, incredible what you can tell just by looking at the eyes and it, it is uh puts you in a tough spot sometimes when you're out in public and you're looking at people and you're trying to remain in the moment but you kind of get lost into what you see in their eyes and <laughs> yeah you know yeah, yeah you can kind of see it coming off people I, I think that the more that we align with the fruits etc you can kind of see that in people and you know, it's quite sad as well but you you can see where people's auric fields are are, are less clean in, in some ways. You know, it's you, can, you see a lot more. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely that way. I mean, it, it's a blessing, and at the same time, it, it can be tough. You need to uh, develop a way of not letting the hardships and 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 the pain and suffering that you see get to you. So. Yeah. So it's yeah, a lot of balancing act. Yeah, very, very much so. You know, so in terms of your own diet then, um, what are you sort of incorporating in terms of for yourself? What, what sort of fruits are you, are you going with? And um, how, 
and how is your pattern your daily pattern what's that like as well my daily patterns are i'm very consistent i start out the same every day for the last few years now where i just have a juice in the morning i'll, I'll use my juicer and around 10 a.m and i'll make a freshly squeezed orange juice or a freshly squeezed apple juice i don't i'm not one to get into all these different mixtures and vegetable juices and things like that i like it simple and i agree and i feel like that's the most beneficial for the body is to keep it simple i, so, I agree <laughs> yeah so there's some people and, and i understand you got to keep it interesting and it's great that they're doing it but they'll have these juices which have about five six different ingredients i'm also just not too lazy but i just can't be bothered to uh, take it that far yeah, yeah. Um, so i start each day off with a juice around 10 a.m and then around noon or one or two sometimes i even stretch it to three i'll have my grapes usually i like grapes um or whatever's in season whatever i can find that seems to be a pretty good quality of fruit um and then for dinner i'll either have more fruit or lately i've been on a 48 hour um, meal plan so every second day or every 48 hours same thing I'll have a mucusless meal so that's you know big green salads steamed vegetables on top I go for the steamed vegetables more than the raw uh, because in terms of digestibility yeah steam yeah. digests a lot easier on the body even though you've killed the life force but mm. I'm not eating this meal for health I'm eating it because I want to yeah, yeah. Um, yeah and then you know at the beginning so now i'll just now that i put in a good you know couple of years on fruits um i can kind of relax a little yeah and that's sort of what i'm doing with this 48 hour meal plan um i am i am going to do another juice fast in december and then i plan to do you know another month on fruits in january so i just go in and out and play with it and there yeah. are no rules really it's just how you feel so yeah yeah you mentioned the 48 hour um, plan that you're working with yeah the yeah. 48 hour meal plan yeah so i just like to have a mucusless meal every 48 hours and after that meal the next day i have either a full out fruit day or i'll fast depending on how i feel so or i'll fast all day and, and just have fruit for dinner so I just kind of play it by ear now yeah. and uh, you know, it calms down a lot. At the beginning, when you first start this journey, you're ravishingly hungry and you eat oh, yeah. huge meals. Yeah. yeah. Um, so now I, I have calmed down a lot and I'm eating a lot less and feeling satisfied a lot longer. So that's just what works for me at this time. So but yeah. as you know, things change so often. Oh, yeah. So. <laughs> this is it. Yeah. So you, you start to because of that the massive detox that we do, you start to go by feeling massively, don't you? So you know you can you, you can feel what you need. You can feel what you you can feel when you want to fast. You know, and it's exactly it's good. Okay. In terms of you, your fasting, what sort of fasting are you doing? You doing uh, dry fasting, water fasting, what? Um, I like well. In the last year, I've sort of got into juice fasting finally, but. At the beginning of my journey, when I first um, discovered Arnold Eret's work, I was doing more water fasting. Now, the longest I've ever done is only five days. I know there's a lot, um, but I, I like to do it more slow and steady. So I've done intermittent fasting since since the day I learned this information. So I've always I've always uh, no breakfast plan. So intermittent fasting till at least noon. Um, and yeah. I feel that it's those small consistent habits such as intermittent fasting that really gets a lot of yeah. results over time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I so, turn that. Go on. Oh, I was just going to say, so I've done some water fasting in the past um, and I've done a few juice fasts and uh, dry fasting. I do incorporate, you know, the odd time if I'm feeling like I need it, um, yeah. but I've never gone beyond, I guess you could say 20 hours of dry fasting at a time. So, I mean, there's some people out there doing three days, six days. Um, I've always kind of kept things rational in my mind, so. 
it's very interesting that you say that you always kind of just stagger it. You know, you, you don't, you skip the actual, that eating in the morning, because I call it breakfast, you see. Yeah, yes. breaking, just breaking the fast, yeah, nothing to do with the morning, just actually breaking that fast. And it, I, I think that, you know, subconsciously it takes us, as we start to detox, we naturally start to look at, you know, breaking this fast after sort of 12 o'clock, etc., in the mm-hmm. afternoon. Because it, it kind of, I it's like it's bow and arrow effect because you're holding it and holding it. And then when you release it, there's just an extra kick of energy. And there's also energy, you know, the oxygen's building up before, whilst you're in that, that fasted state as well. So I do that too. Yeah. And it begins to feel natural the, the cleaner your body becomes. So, I mean, at first, you know, four years ago, I was kind of forcing myself and I was hungry and I wanted to eat by 11 and I couldn't yeah. wait for that meal. And now sometimes it'll be three o'clock before I even have that first meal of fruits and doesn't bother me. So yeah. it just yeah. takes time to build yourself up to these stages. And I know I've got a long ways to go still, but I've definitely come a long ways too. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Long way to go, but we've come a long way. It's amazing. I think that it's, yeah. you know, how do you find in terms of energy? Cause I, I think that it, it's like our energy has risen drastically, which is when we were in a low, less energy, that's when we wanted to keep eating these big, it's like we want to keep eating these big meals to try and draw energy out of them. But then it's a vicious cycle, isn't it? Cause you're eating these big meals to draw energy out, but then the body's having to work extra hard to break it down. So you, you just can never win. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I knew that I had to go through that period when I was overeating and, and giving all my energy to digestion. And um, I, I would eat huge meals, um, say four years ago, three years ago, when I was on the transition diet. But now, I mean, the meals have gotten considerably smaller, lighter, and I finally do have energy in the last, I guess you could say a year and a half. Yeah. Um, but I, I understood the process before, so I, I wasn't worried. See, a lot of people, they begin this process and they're so worried about not having energy and that they always want to eat. Yeah. And, yeah. and I never worried about that. I knew that it was just part of the process and I just had to go through it. And so now I've got energy, um, quite a bit of it. And, and you know, it's fairly cold here, but I, I usually get on my trampoline every day or, or I try and get outside for a walk or, you know, yeah. uh, constantly doing stuff yeah, yeah. keyboard warrior just yeah. uh, helping out on facebook everywhere so yeah yeah yeah, yeah. massive the energy is just it's, it's unbelievable so yeah it's i also experienced that as well i used to i started off having one meal of an evening uh, and i yeah. started that about it's about three and a half years ago i was eating like one meal a day um, yeah. and, and it used to find you just get this because you just eat fruits all day and then when you have this one meal of an evening you'd have this massive meal with, to try and <laughs> thinking that you need to eat this massive meal and it would just, it would just yeah. knock, you, it'd knock you down. So you, there's a lot of learning that's happened, I could, which is what I call the term is gnosis. There's a lot of learning that's happened just through, you know, actually in this, you know, this, this, this lifestyle. So we've just learned so much, I feel. Sorry? I just feel that we've learned so much through going oh, yes. raw with the raw fruit, it just teaches us so much, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Food is information as well, and, and, yeah. and, and fasting, it's, it's amazing what comes in when you, when you have the absence of food, so. Yeah. I mean, that's when I'm the most creative, when I can write the best, is when I've been fasting. Yeah. I don't have anything in there. Yeah, this is it, yes. you know, information just comes in, this is what happens for me. You know, I just, you, you download information, the lighter you become, you be, the more energetic you become and the more you want to, to learn and know things and then things just start flooding in, downloads start, start coming in. So it, it is a more upgraded state of being. It is. And you just have to experience it to realize it though, which is, you know, the tough part about helping other people along this journey is all those little things that you experience along the way, you can't really explain that to them. Yeah. And you'll see little improvements in yourself because you know yourself so well, like whether it's in your skin or in the way you feel, your personality, your attitude. I mean, everything, every aspect of your being changes. And 
those things you can't explain to people. They just have to experience it for themselves. So. Yeah. Well, this is, that's the thing, isn't it? You know, like you're saying, you're doing a lot of work online uh, with people that are, that are suffering, etc. And it's just, they, they have to go into it themselves. Like you can lead a horse to water. We always say, I can't make you drink, you know? So, exactly. you know, did, did you say something about having a, uh, you, you're starting to have a YouTube channel. Was it, were you, were you saying that? YouTube channel? Yeah. Yes. Um, so I've just basically started uh, creating videos and uh, it's called, it, it's a detoxification um, health channel where people can, can uh, you know, learn about how to detoxify or different health tips or how to heal themselves. Um, yeah. So I probably, if I had to estimate, maybe I have eight videos up so far. And I'm trying to commit to putting out one a week, getting more comfortable in front of the camera and getting a little more vocal because, I mean, that's, that's the way to get the information out I see is through, through the YouTube. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah def definitely. Yeah. So, so you, you kind of looking at the things that you're saying, and it's always like a mirror reflection from what happens you just want this essence of wanting to try to help other people so that they can experience the bliss that we experience yeah yeah i mean helping people is so rewarding at times and then at other times you know if people don't find the drive and the motivation because you can't you can't heal somebody they have to ultimately heal themselves and basically, we're there to provide information and to help them develop a deeper understanding and motivation so that they can take on the difficult but rewarding task of, of finding remedy for their health issues. And, and so many people are suffering out there, even the ones who don't feel they are suffering are suffering. Yeah. Which you and I can see through, yeah. you know, just the color of their skin or or through their eyes or, you know, whether they have dark circles under their eyes. Yeah. You know, there's so much you can see there. Oh. Yeah, we got you. Yeah. And this is this okay. is this is this is the, the key. And and that's when it you it that I think that in itself is what makes us or drives us to want to help other people because we can see this kind of mass suffering. And it's like, well, you don't need to suffer like this. So we, that's what makes us kind of want to have YouTube channels and, you know, push the information out there. But we're getting somewhere. It's working. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I love your channel. I just started watching it. Thank you. About a couple of weeks ago. And I watched a few videos. And what you're doing is great. I just have to say thank you. Because we need as many truth warriors and, and health uh, specialists yeah. as we can get. And uh, I apologize, but my phone just went into low battery mode. I don't want to cut this short, but I don't have a way of charging it on this tripod. No um, worries. How unfair am I? No worries. <laughs> so we, we're going to have to chat again, too. Yeah, that's not a problem. We love part twos. <laughs> we, nice. we love them. We love it. We love it. Yeah. So, it's, you know, you, you said that So when you moved, you moved somewhere. Did you, are you growing your own? fruits to an extent or um right now i still have a little place out in westbridge it's it's about 45 minutes away and i've planted lots of fruit trees there and they're in their second they'll be in their third year they're producing a little bit of fruit and uh, all summer long next summer i'm gonna have to either go live in the campground in a tent so i or or uh, on that property to water them yeah for yeah, so they still need water. So I do have fruit trees growing. And it is in my interest and my goals to always plant trees every year, whether it's in somebody else's yard or my own, or to just plant trees um, from seeds or from cuttings, or if I find them in places where they're growing and I know they're going to get um, overrun, I'll dig them up and pot them and uh, pot them up and I'll give them away. So. I mean, I, I'm very big on spreading trees around and I do yeah. have some fruit trees and things so that I've got to take care of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I like that as well. I, I go with that too. It's all about, you know, kind of replanting, even with, with fruits, etc. You know, it's, it's always good. If you're going to pick a fruit from a tree, which is providing you with a fruit for you to eat, we should always look to try and replant the seeds as well. I, I think that's, 
something massive that we should be doing really yeah oh yes and that's what I did love about living in my little off-grid places I had a couple greenhouses and there was even this one garden bed where I was, I was spitting out my cherry seeds and uh, different seeds and this is all local organic fruit so when little trees started sprouting up and I started potting them up I knew that they were viable little trees you know they weren't from the grocery store and sterile seeds and things but yeah I mean that's a big part of it it's important to be connected to nature I fully believe that and I will never lose my connection with nature yeah 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 our happiness is aligned with it isn't it it is yeah, yeah. it really really is just totally aligned with just aligning with life and aligning with nature because it, it gives us this, this energy. You know, you, you, you mentioned actually, you said that the energy took quite a while for it to kick in. It did, yes. But I mean, once you start growing your own food and, uh, you know, just, just, it just takes, I don't know. I mean, everybody wakes up in different ways. But for me, yeah. it was definitely just the healthy food coming in and a few other things. But yeah 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 i suppose it would be with being on the farm except there'd be lots of dairy on that farm <laughs> yeah. no i mean it felt so unnatural just having to milk a cow two times a day and and we loved that cow her name was mercedes and you know um just just felt so unnatural and it was yeah. like is, is you know people are so disconnected from their food they just go to the grocery store and pick up a jug of milk and a carton of eggs but when you actually have to do it yourself, it's a whole other story, and you realize how unnatural it is. I mean, yeah. you're taking from the animals, yeah, and those yeah, animals yeah. are so loving and beautiful, and it yeah. just never felt right. And you know, I guess I had to go through that though in order to wake up. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. I'm spending a lifetime now making up for any harm I did cause nature back then. So. Yeah, yeah. You probably would have noticed a lot of it. I call this as a law of cause and effect. It's like you're causing this suffering. So you, you would have noticed lots of where things don't go quite right. You know, with, you would do the animals and then some of the animals, you can see that they know what's happening to them. It must, it must be really a, a massive eye opener, you know. Oh yeah, no, in terms it was. Of, in terms of you waking up, I bet, I bet that played a massive part in it. That was it. I mean, I never felt quite right there. I, 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 could, I, I didn't see the farming aspect coming into the picture. I actually did originally think we would just be moving there to grow food and whatnot, but it just sort of turned into a place where the animals just, I mean, people would drop animals off or leave animals at our place. And so it became a bit of a sanctuary and at the same time a farm. So, I mean, it, it was a strange time in life, I'll have to admit. And, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I had the experience so I could wake up. But yeah. at the same time, you know, it, it wasn't easy for anybody involved, yeah, <laughs> the yeah, animals yeah. included. Yeah, yeah. Well, the work that you're doing online is absolutely fantastic, you know. Every, you. You know, everyone I've spoke to about yourself is praising you so what you're doing and what I've seen is just brilliant so obviously I don't need to tell you to keep up the good work because you're going to do it anyway so what we'll, what we'll have to do is get you back on and do a part two uh, and yes, see exactly I love where, that. yeah fantastic and we'll see exactly where you are and see if we can incorporate and do, and do some work you know? sounds good yeah and yeah. I thank you so much for everything you're doing and for getting me on the show as well and okay yeah yeah Brilliant. So yeah, but Alkalize to realize this, this is what it's about. It's, it's about us. The, the main aim for us is to actually service people to make alkalinity, you know, wide, widespread. If there's anybody out there that, that needs help, you know, just, you know, email us alkalize to realize at hotmail.com. And we're, we've got plenty of, you know, avenues and protocols to work with. Uh, you know, Mariah's come on and give some fantastic information. The, the thing she's talking about with the eyes, it, it's very brilliant. You can't hide from it. It tells us exactly how, how healthy or unhealthy you are. <laughs> so, you know, exactly. it's good. Let's, let's be honest and let, let's push forward and, and look to improve ourselves. So, Mariah, it's been fantastic to have you on. Um, Thank you. What was the name of your YouTube channel? Uh, Mariah Heal Thyself. 
So M A R I A H, and then there's an underscore heal underscore thy underscore itself. Of course, I had to make it difficult. <laughs> got to, got to be done. It's all for the thinking mind. So, guys, you know where to find us. You can find us at the Blood of Christ Age During Therapy Group. You can find us at Alkalize to Realize uh, Talk Show. Add, jump onto both of those if you want to know how to activate yourself and upgrade. And you can add me as Fabian Farkson on uh, Facebook. And you can also please subscribe to us on YouTube. There's plenty of fantastic shows just like this one. With lots of mind bending and lots of stuff in terms of you actually upgrading yourself. So guys, it's fantastic. And we'll see you on the next one. Mariah, see you soon. Peace and love. Peace and love to you too. See you soon. <laughs>